بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله We praise our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our master, our sustainer, our provider, our creator. We ask him to keep us guided on the straight path. And we seek his help, his guidance, his aid. And we ask him to forgive all of our sins. Allahumma ameen. It is a big ni'mah that we are here. It's a big blessing that we are here in the masjid, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, completing night prayers, and during the day, completing a fast. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِ Whoever we'll fast the month of Ramadan with Iman and seeking pleasure and reward from Allah, all of his past sins are forgiven. وَمَنْ قَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِ And whoever stands in a night prayer, with Iman and seeking the reward of Allah, all of his past sins are forgiven. وَمَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ And whoever stands in the night of Qadr with Iman and seeking reward from Allah, all of his past sins are forgiven. This is something that we should think of every single day and renew the intention that all of my sins can be forgiven in this month. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes a siyam and the objective behind it, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ He then says, أَيَّامًا مَعْدُودَاتِ That they are countable days, days that will disappear and perish so quickly. During the day, when we are fasting, it is not just about leaving food and water, but it is also about reforming our character and changing our bad habits and our characteristics. And this is why the one who is fasting, but he is still fighting with others and arguing and acting foolish, then Allah is not in need of that person to leave his food and his water. The one who does not leave foolishness, then Allah does not want this person to leave his food and his drink. And likewise, leaving all of the muharramat, all of the sins. Some people are fasting, but they are still committing sins. And the night prayer during at night, these two things will intercede for us. The siyam will say to Allah on the day of judgment, I have, I have kept him away from eating and drinking, so Ya Allah have mercy on this person. Raise his ranks. And the Quran will say, I have kept him up at night. He was reciting and listening to the Quran, so Ya Allah forgive him and raise his ranks. And the more Quran we read, the more protection we have. The more it's like a fortress to our hearts, to our minds, to our souls, and the less likely we will commit sins. And the less Qur'an we read and the further we are from the dhikr of Allah and his kalam, the most likely it is easier for us to follow our nafs and our hawa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةً بِالسُّوءِ We have learned that during Ramadan, the shayateen, they are locked up. Yet many of us are still falling into sins. What is the reason for that? The nafs is very powerful and the nafs it desires to follow the hawa and to follow temptations and to follow desires and it only orders su, evil so we learn that the most important or the, the main objective of Ramadan is لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ so that we can gain taqwa and in order for us to gain taqwa we need to discipline the nafs and this is why Ramadan giving up food and water is giving up the permissible 
leisure that we have, the permissible desires. Eating and drinking is halal. So it should teach us to even leave the haram as well. The haram desires. This is what Ramadan trains us to do. And if the objective is لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that we may gain taqwa, God consciousness, fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ittiba' al-awamir, ijtinab al-nawahi. If this is the main objective, then in order for us to attain this, the nafs, it needs training. The companions of Allah ta'ala, they mention some of the impacts and the effects of the ma'asi in our lives, in our health, and in our society, in our environment. From the effects of the sins that they mention is that it removes the blessings from our lives. It removes the blessings in our world, in our jobs, with our families, with our children. Things become more difficult. We have more difficult days. From the effects also of sins that they mention is that they have al hayat. It removes shyness and modesty from the person. It removes good character from the person. From the effects of sin is it brings dil to the person. It brings disgrace and dishonor for the person. Where someone can be a respected person, a person of status, due to his ma'asi, Allah Azza wa Jal will dishonor this person or disgrace, disgrace this person. From the effects also of sins is that it leads to other sins. A person can commit one small sin, but due to this sin, it leads him to do more, more sins. And likewise, the effects of good deeds it leads to other good deeds. It opens other doors. So from the lessons we take from the story of Yusuf is that his brothers, they started with one, you can argue, minus sin. They had suid dhan. Okay, which is something that many people struggle with. Almost natural to sometimes be jealous of someone. But this needs controlling. This comes from the nafs and it needs controlling. So they were jealous that the father loves Yusuf more than them. This was only the, their only sin. But they acted upon that and it led them to other sins. It led them to attempt to murder their, their sibling and to lie and to falsify the shirt. So one sin leads to hundreds of other sins. Whereas the good deed leads to other good deeds. From the effects of sins <coughs> is that it decreases the ta'deem of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the heart of the person. The ta'deem of the person, the ta'deem of Allah جل, in the heart of that person. Because usually someone fears Allah. He knows Allah is watching him. He does not want Allah, Allah to be displeased with him. So someone who regularly sins, that ta'deem of Allah, it, it decreases. As Bilal radiallahu anhu, he said, لا تنظروا إلى صغر الخطيئة Do not look at the small size of the sin. ولكن انظروا إلى من عصيت Look at the greatness of the one you disobeyed. And Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, in regards to blessings being removed due to sins, he said, مَا نَزَلَ بَلَاءٌ إِلَّا بِذَمْ A bala that befalls upon a person, hardship, difficulties, trials, مَا نَزَلَ إِلَّا بِذَمْ It did not come down except due to a sin. وَلَا رُفِعَ إِلَّا بِتَوْبَةٍ And it would not be removed except through returning back to Allah and repenting. These are some of the effects of the sins and it's important that we understand that sins have an effect it is the main reason behind diseases to occur it is the main reason behind ham depression and misery and sadness because we live in a time where many people are complaining about depression and mental health and many mental issues that it links back to the sins and this is why we need to if we want to lead a happy life and become better people and happier people which we all seek we need to stop the sins and if we want to remain upon sadness and misery 
then continue with your sins. وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً أَوْكَ The one who is away from Allah, he's going to have a hard life. But the mu'min, the real mu'min, who does good deeds, he's going to have hayatan tayyibah. He's going to have a good, pleasure life. So in this month, we need to do tawbat and nasuha, repent sincerely to Allah, and try our best to leave the sins. The last 10 nights are coming. وَالْأَعْمَالُ بِخَوَاتِمِهِ The most important actions are the last part. We are in a race right now. And towards the end, we need to exhaust all of our efforts so that we can make it towards the end. And we are coming to the last third. So we need to excel in ibadah, in qiraat al-Qur'an, in qiyam. And if we are still doing the sins, then we need to question, you know, am I really taking advantage of Ramadan? Am I benefiting from Ramadan? And we don't want to be from those people who the Prophet mentioned that Ramadan came and they were not forgiven. They did not change, they weren't impacted. It was just a robotic thing that they got desensitized of doing, fasting, and they did not change their character. So we need to do tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Him to help us stay away from sins. And we conclude with the, with the statement of Imam Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah, who said, إن لذة المعاصي تذهب ويبقى عقابها. The so-called joy, the so-called ease that you think you get through sins, as soon as you finish that sin, تذهب. That joy is gone. ويبقى عقابها. What would remain is it would be written. Is the accountability. The Prophet said that. A soda, a black dot will enter your heart for every sin you do. And if you do many, then it will cover your heart. This is the ran that Allah mentions in the Quran, where the heart is fully covered and you have hurman, you are forbidden to do good deeds. So all of the ma'asi, there's no real lidda to it, even if we are deceived to think so. And even if we think there is, for it, it is a short time and it would go. <laughs> but the hardship, the efforts that we are putting now, we feel behind with Qiraat al Quran, but we still push ourselves. Let me read five more pages. We feel tired and we say, let me stay home today instead of going for tarawih. We fight that. In the, in the we are tired and thirsty during Ramadan. But this will yet have it will be removed straight away. That hardship, that tiredness. When you break your fast after a long day, there is a real joy for that person, that fasting person. So the mashaqqa of the ta'at tadhab wa yabqa tawabuha. But what would remain is the pleasure of Allah is the reward from Allah. So let us remember that inshallah ta'ala. We are going to work hard, but that hardship will be removed. Last week when you prayed Qiyam or Tarawih, are you complaining today about how tired you were? You forgot about it, it's gone. Are you complaining about yesterday's fast or today's fast? You forgot about it. When you perform Umrah or Hajj, do you complain now about the efforts you put? In fact, you enjoy it more due to the extra efforts that you put. So the hardship that we put, it will be removed and what would remain forever is the reward and the pleasure from Allah and your own happiness, your own feeling good. Alhamdulillah, I just finished Quran, I just finished Siyam, I just finished Salah. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah Azim, Rabbi Arsh al Azim, and Yaghfir lana dhunubana, وأن يكفر عنا سيئاتنا وأن يطهر لنا قلوبنا اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين